Hello, today we'll be going through practice question 61 to 70 for the CompTIA Sizer Plus exam. Let's begin. Which of the following best describes the goal of a tabletop exercise? The correct answer is A. To test possible incident scenarios and how to react properly. A tabletop exercise is a discussion-based session where team members walk through simulated incident scenarios to evaluate response procedures, communication, and decision-making. The primary goal is to test how the team would react to incidents in a low-stress, non-operational environment. Why the other options are incorrect? B. To perform attack exercises to check response effectiveness. This describes a red team or penetration test, not a tabletop exercise. C. To understand existing threat actors and how to replicate their techniques. This aligns more with threat hunting or purple team exercises, not tabletop exercises. D. To check the effectiveness of the business continuity plan. Business continuity may be included, but incident response is the core focus of tabletop exercises. BCP testing typically involves full-scale disaster recovery drills, not tabletop reviews. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A virtual web server in a server pool was infected with malware after an analyst used the internet to research a system issue. After the server was rebuilt and added back to the server pool, users reported issues with the website, indicating the site could not be trusted. Which of the following is the most likely cause of the server issue? The correct answer is D. The digital certificate on the web server was self-signed. When a self-signed certificate is used, web browsers will show warnings like site not trusted or your connection is not private because the certificate is not issued by a trusted CA. This is the most likely reason users are seeing trust issues after the server was rebuilt. Why the other options are incorrect? A. The server was configured to use SSL to securely transmit data. Using SSL is standard and does not cause trust errors unless the certificate is invalid or untrusted. B. The server was supporting weak TLS protocols for client connections. This could be a security concern, but typically doesn't cause browsers to flag a site as untrusted. It would trigger a different warning. C. The malware infected all the web servers in the pool. If that were the case, the site might behave oddly or be malicious, but it wouldn't necessarily result in a site not trusted certificate error. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A security analyst needs to ensure that systems across the organization are protected based on the sensitivity of the content each system hosts. The analyst is working with the respective system owners to help determine the best methodology that seeks to promote confidentiality, availability, and integrity of the data being hosted. Which of the following should the security analyst perform first to categorize and prioritize the respective systems? The correct answer is D. Determine the asset value of each system. To categorize and prioritize systems based on the sensitivity of the data they host, the analyst must first assess the asset value. This includes evaluating how critical the system is to business operations and how sensitive or valuable the hosted data is, directly impacting decisions about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Interview the users who access these systems. This can provide useful context, but it's not the first or most effective step for system classification and prioritization. B. Scan the system to see which vulnerabilities currently exist. Vulnerability scanning is important for risk mitigation but comes after assets have been categorized and prioritized. C. Configure alerts for vendor-specific zero-day exploits. This is part of ongoing threat monitoring and defense but it's not relevant for initial system classification based on data sensitivity. Therefore, the correct answer is D. Which of the following best describes the document that defines the expectation to network customers that patching will only occur between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m.? The correct answer is A. SLA. An SLA is a formal document that defines the level of service expected from a service provider, 
including specific expectations like maintenance windows, uptime, and response times. Stating that patching will only occur between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. is a classic example of a service availability term within an SLA. Why the other options are incorrect? B. LOI. An LOI is a preliminary agreement outlining general intentions before a formal contract is signed. It doesn't define specific service terms. C. MOU. An MOU outlines mutual understanding between parties, often informal and less detailed than an SLA. It typically lacks binding service terms like scheduled patching. D. KPI. A KPI measures performance but doesn't define the service terms or expectations themselves. Therefore, the correct answer is A. A cybersecurity analyst is reviewing SIEM logs and observes consistent requests originating from an internal host to a block-listed external server. Which of the following best describes the activity that has taken place? The correct answer is D. Beaconing. Beaconing refers to regular, repeated communication from an internal system to an external command and control server, often seen in malware infections. The consistent requests to a known block-listed external server strongly indicate beaconing behavior. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Data exfiltration. This involves actively sending sensitive data out, but the question only mentions consistent requests, not confirmed data transfers. B. Rogue device. A rogue device is unauthorized hardware on the network. There is no indication that the internal host itself is unauthorized. C. Scanning. Scanning typically involves probing multiple systems or ports, not repeated communication with a single external server. Therefore, the correct answer is D. A SOC analyst identifies the following content while examining the output of a debugger command over a client-server application. Which of the following is the most likely vulnerability in this system? The correct answer is C. Hard-coded credential. The string clearly shows a username and password embedded directly in code, which indicates the presence of hard-coded credentials, a serious security vulnerability. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Lack of input validation. There is no indication in the output that user input is being improperly handled or validated. B. SQL injection. SQL injection involves injecting malicious SQL commands into input fields or queries. This is a static function call, not an SQL query. D. Buffer overflow. Buffer overflows involve memory overrun due to improperly handled input lengths. There is no evidence of such behavior in this code snippet. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A managed security service provider is having difficulty retaining talent due to an increasing workload caused by a client doubling the number of devices connected to the network. Which of the following would best aid in decreasing the workload without increasing staff? The correct answer is C. SOAR SOAR platforms are specifically designed to automate repetitive security tasks, correlate alerts, and orchestrate responses across tools. In this case, SOAR would significantly reduce analyst workload by automating much of the response and triage work, helping the provider scale without hiring more staff. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Seam. Seam collects and analyzes log data but typically generates a high volume of alerts and still requires manual triage unless integrated with SOAR. B. XDR. XDR improves visibility across multiple security layers and tools but focuses on detection and correlation, not full automation of workflows. D. EDR. EDR focuses on detecting and responding to endpoint threats not on broad automation or orchestration across the environment. It's more useful for deep endpoint visibility than reducing general workload. Therefore, the correct answer is C. An employee is suspected of misusing a company-issued laptop. The employee has been suspended pending an investigation by human resources. Which of the following is the best step to preserve evidence? The correct answer is... D. Make a forensic image of the device and create a SHA-1 hash. Creating a forensic image preserves the exact state of the device without altering the original data. The SHA-1 hash, or preferably SHA-256 today, ensures the integrity of the image can be verified, 
making it admissible and reliable as evidence during an investigation. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Disable the user's network account and access to web resources. This prevents further misuse but does not preserve the current state of the evidence. B. Make a copy of the files as a backup on the server. Copying files could miss hidden or deleted data and alters file timestamps, potentially contaminating evidence. C. Place a legal hold on the device and the user's network share. This is a necessary legal action, but does not technically preserve the data in its current state for forensic analysis. Therefore, the correct answer is D. An analyst receives threat intelligence regarding potential attacks from an actor with seemingly unlimited time and resources. Which of the following best describes the threat actor attributed to the malicious activity? The correct answer is C. Nation state. A nation state threat actor typically has virtually unlimited time, funding, and resources to conduct long term targeted cyber operations. These actors are often highly sophisticated and pursue strategic goals, such as espionage or infrastructure disruption. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Insider threat. An insider may have privileged access but generally lacks the extensive resources and time associated with a nation-state actor. B. Ransomware group. These are usually financially motivated cyber criminals looking for quick profit, not long-term espionage or strategic disruption. D. Organized crime. Organized crime groups are skilled and well-funded, but not to the level of state-sponsored actors in terms of resources, persistence, and geopolitical motivations. Therefore, the correct answer is C. A systems analyst is limiting user access to system configuration keys and values in a Windows environment. Which of the following describes where the analyst can find these configuration items? The correct answer is D. Registry. In a Windows environment, system configuration keys and values, such as user settings, system policies, and application preferences, are stored in the Windows registry. The analyst would limit access by modifying registry permissions. Why the other options are incorrect? A. Config.ini. This is a generic configuration file used by specific applications, not a central store for system-wide configuration. B. NTDS.dit. This is the Active Directory database file used on domain controllers, not a general purpose system configuration store. C. MBR. The MBR is used for bootstrapping the OS and partition info. It does not store system configuration keys or values. Therefore, the correct answer is D. We have come to the end of today's video. If you liked the video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Goodbye.